Viewers, welcome once again to another episode for Admire the Art of Business. I'm your host, Admire Taimaya, also known as Ziwa. Uh, it's great and it's my pleasure as well to introduce to you one of our special guests who I would say is very special and he has done l lots of things actually. A lot of uh, accomplishments, I would say. He used to be a lecturer in Zimbabwe at uni level. He migrated to Australia where he also was a lecturer at uni level as well. He went to uni not just to lecture. That's one thing that's very special. He went to uni not just to lecture, but he went to uni to lecture and also to study PhD. PhD being the highest qualification you can ever get at a university. And it's my pleasure, definitely right now, to introduce to the lovely viewers our special guest, Kudzima Tereke. Thank you. How are you doing, man? I'm good. <laughs> good good to oh, see you. Good to have you once again, you know. <laughs> My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> we'll go back in time, you know. Yeah. Uh, I even, you know, look look back in time like, okay, now we are sitting here today. Yeah. But when we met, this was like 20, was it like 2012, 2013? They're about, yeah. They're about, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. Wow. A long time ago. A long time ago. Yeah. And you meet friends in, um, in some spontaneous ways. Exactly. That you never thought that we have a relationship for for spanning to this to this. Uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, Doctor Kudzi. Yeah. No, you don't like that. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to tease you about that, right? Yeah. But uh, please allow me to, you know, during this interview to keep calling you Doctor Kudzi or Doctor K to make it very cool, you know. Um, it's okay. I can call you Doctor Materek. It's, it's still okay as well. But Doctor K sounds good. Okay. What do you think? As so, you please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good, that's fine. So you tell us, just give us a brief about yourself. Yep. Who is Kudzi Matereke? Okay, so Kudzi Kudzai Matereke was born in Zimbabwe almost uh, 50 years ago yeah. uh, and grew up in Zimbabwe. I did my high school in um, in Pekita at Pamshana, Pamshana High School mm -hmm. from Pamshana because there wasn't um, a level at Pamshana. I went to Gutu, Gutu High School. From Gutu High School, I went to University of Zimbabwe. And um, after completing my first degree uh, at uh, University of Zimbabwe, I went back uh, to the rural areas to teach a bit. I think it was for one term, then went back to university mm. to advance myself until until I got um, uh, my special honors in philosophy. After that, I went back to uni again and studied uh, masters in philosophy. And um, I had uh, a very strong passion for teaching. So mm -hmm. I later uh, enrolled in the University of Zimbabwe's uh, Faculty of Education to do my graduate certificate in education. Okay. So, uh, but I never went back to teach in high school uh, uh, for, a, for a long time because um, I decided to get a job at um, university. So I started teaching at university and I was teaching philosophy. Oh, wow. Uh, so I taught for close to seven years. Then after that, that's when I came to Australia. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So you you did your masters after masters. That's when you went. Did you go back to teach as well at high school? No, no. I was I was already at, at university when I did my masters. Oh, okay. I was already teaching at university. At university. Yeah. So only did uh, taught in um, in high school for, for for. It was intermittent. It was just for a term. Then, so then university you know. opens. I go back to uni. Okay. Then yeah. You could see yourself like oh you know what I, I love to teach these youngsters. But I think my mind is sharp enough to go to uni and, and support these these yeah. guys over there. That's that's lovely. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. And it didn't stop there. That's when you, you know, go on and on and you came to Australia, is it? Uh, when I came to Australia, I still had that passion because my um postgraduate, my PhD studies back in Zimbabwe, they okay. were terminated because of high brain drain from the University of Zimbabwe. So I didn't have a supervisor. Okay. Uh, I would have a supervisor for one semester, the supervisor okay. would go on. Who go to another or transfer, then 
I just I abandoned it. Mm -hmm. And when I came to Australia, that's when I decided to resume with my PhD. That, that's an interesting point. Mm. So it's in, in Zimbabwe, right? You you tried to do the PhD, yeah. but because there were the, the the resources were not available for you to pursue that program, yeah. you had to abandon it. Yeah, that's that's not too good. That's for, that's yeah. the the extent of the brain drain mm. during that period. Yeah, but I understand things have stabilized now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Things are improving. The, you yeah. know, uh, we hope in every 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 area of. of in Zimbabwe, you know, yeah, exactly. but uh, it's also good because we got a chance at least now to sit with you, you know, mm. uh, which is which is a great thing. Uh, let's go back in time. You said um, you you grew up in Gutu, is that right? I grew up in Zaga. In Zaga. But I went to high school in Gutu. Zaga no Pisa. Yes. Ah, that's lovely, where, that's lovely. Where, that's where I come from originally. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Did you grow up in Zaga? Yes. How was the life in Zaga? Uh, I grew up as a, you know, I. I had a very loving family. Okay. Um, I still do have okay. a very loving family. I grew up, I have a twin. Uh, so growing up as twins, you know, you always give each other a challenge. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So it was, it, I had a nice childhood. Uh, uh, my father and mother used to operate a shop, but still we maintained um, our rural uh, okay. roots, um, and um, the the life back then, because part part of part of um, growing up in the rural areas mm -hmm. in the in the seventies, there was also war. Yeah, in the seventies, ended in nineteen eighty. Then we started going to school, so it was quite um, exciting moments. Yeah. Uh, yeah. being uh, able to go to school freely without any uh, hindrances or without any fear of, uh, you know, the bush fighters and, and all that. So, yes, I had a good childhood and I always uh, uh, think, up, think about the good times <laughs> that I used to share yeah, with my family yeah, and yeah. friends. That's that's good. Yeah. And you said uh, your parents were operating a grocery shop. Is that right? Yeah. Back back in back in Zaka, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So were you one of those child whereby you know how it is your your your, your dad and your mom they were the business in the local area. Then you're one of the bushy people in around in the in the neighborhood. And not, was it not, like that? Not really. Not yeah. really because my father and mother they they, they would always keep us grounded. Okay. Um, we would still do what uh, like whatever. Oh, like what other children will do. We, do, we yeah. still go to head cattle. Oh, okay, nice. We still go to the fields. Yep, yep. And we're quite productive oh, as okay. a family. Okay. Very productive. Uh, and it's something that I always look at and say, I think we had a very good start in life mm, in the mm. sense of having parents who instill good work ethic and also would encourage you to be grounded mm. to be who you are mm. and not to maybe look down upon other people mm. so that's that's the hallmark of um, probably if you say success if you want to raise a child uh, wherever you are yeah i think they should always remain humble and um, have a good understanding of the social dynamics within their, their area and also not to look down upon others. That's a big point you just put across in yeah. there. Being humble, obviously, going to help in terms of raising the children. Exactly. Beautiful. Thank you very much mm. for that. And uh, I hope the viewers out there, you're picking up all these couple of uh, you know important nuggets coming from um, uh, Dr. K. Uh, he's not just called Dr. K for, for no reason. Uh, he went to uni uh, to study his PhD in philosophy. We'll be talking about that and more and what he... Uh, the peer-reviewed journals that you wrote, it, it's got quite a bit of uh, list in there. When he was telling me uh, prior to the interview, I was very much surprised. I was very much surprised. You're doing, you're doing well, man. You're doing, you're successful, actually. That's what I, I would think. Uh, yeah, but you know, in, in academia, success is, it's, it's a very competitive environment. Yeah. Um, and um, I would say probably I was success when I was doing it and I really enjoyed it. So there is working towards achieving something, but also something that you really enjoy. Yeah. yeah. I, I really used to, 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 to enjoy, enjoy that, that as a student, um, 
doing my publications and also going for conferences, making presentations, and also forming uh, forming associations with other people, and um, uh, being able to connect yeah. and yeah. share ideas. Mm -hmm. And um, but they, 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 there was a sense that uh, probably I, I, I still felt that. I need to do something different, okay. but bigger. So in that way, that's 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 when my my career path um, changed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Along oh, the way. So you you came to Australia. Um, mm. This was which year was that, by the way? Two thousand seven. Two thousand seven. Fourteenth of August. Two thousand seven. Oh my God! You still yeah. remember the day? I still remember the day. <laughs> yeah. You've got that vivid memory. Eh? Vivid memory of the day you. Um, you you catch your first flight. Yeah. Uh, then you soar in the skies and um, you leave your 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 homeland. Yeah. Going to a foreign country. Yes. But also, when you get there, mm -hmm. um, getting used to that foreign country to a point where you call it home. Yes. So I think that 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 really made um, a complete. Uh, change mm -hmm. in my life mm -hmm. to a point where I, I now see when I was anxious mm -hmm. I'm asking myself why was I anxious exactly. <laughs> and also when I was taking things for granted I also asked myself why didn't uh, I maybe envisage mm -hmm. a situation where I would say these things are going to happen mm -hmm. or why was I so naive yeah yeah in a way so it, it's, it's, a, it's a kind of a mixed mixed mm -hmm. feeling mixed feeling yeah I guess this this is the main thrust for for this program for this chat as well and as well uh you know getting back to the viewers as well the main thing for us having a chat right now and going on forward in our episodes is to have a chat with people who came from overseas being immigrants coming in here and what they started to do was you know dr kuzi was put it across that you could be anxious you don't know what you're expecting you're coming from homeland then you are going to a different kind of way but you don't know what's there but the main thing is, what did you do when you got to that country? The things that you start to achieve from there. Because it's not easy. It's not easy at all. And this is one of the hopes, the challenge that he met. That being anxious, you know, uh, not knowing where you're going. That I guess that's why I still remember 14th of, of August 2007, exactly. you know. Exactly. <laughs> that, that's quite interesting, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Okay. So from there, um, what... I want to what what the first job that you did. Oh, I want to know about that. What the first job that you did? You don't want to know. Uh, <laughs> we want to know that. So 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 you know, it, my first job or whatever jobs I did, it was more about um, adventure. Yep. Yeah. Oh, nice. So adventure shaped whatever uh, work or whatever employment I got into. Okay. Second thing was also survival. Okay. So in as much as you are compelled uh, to do certain jobs because you want to survive, but there's also an element of adventure. Yeah, yeah. So my first job, I would say I was a laborer oh. at, a, at a construction site. At a construction site? Yeah. So, so wow. it, was, it was quite exciting because that's when I, I, I started to know Sydney because I used to work for an agency. Okay. So the agency will say, okay, today you go to Parramatta. Yeah. Tomorrow you're going to uh, uh, Red Fair. Yeah, yeah. The following day, I got different places, Flemington. So yeah. I knew these places through travel. Yeah, yeah. And I used to use public tra transport. Okay. So through that, I, there was an element of adventure, yeah. but I also got an income. Mm -hmm. So that was my first, uh, one of my first jobs. The other job is uh, when things had stabilized a bit, I then went to work in a, in a factory. Uh, uh, so it was a- That was an improvement, eh? Wheelbarrow, okay. wheelbarrow uh, um, um, assem assembly. Okay. So get boxes of, um, the different pieces yeah, and parts yeah. of a wheelbarrow, then you compare, you, 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 get them together. you get them together and um, we'll pack them in the, in the trucks for so delivery. Yeah. So you're coming from construction site. Yeah. Whereby you're pushing the wheelbarrow around. Yeah. Labor with the wheelbarrow. Yeah. Then you improve yourself. Yeah. Now you are it, assembling yeah, the wheelbarrow, yeah, the yeah, new no, one. <laughs> <laughs> the so, yeah. That was the power, right? And, um, yeah. So, so that's also one 
interesting thing about Australia that it gives you the flexibility. So yeah, it's not really about, uh, you know, um, what job yeah. you are doing. It's about, do you enjoy it? Yep, yep. It's about, do you get an income out of mm. it? Do you sustain yourself yeah. as a result? Mm, mm, mm. Uh, my, so after, after, after the, the a brief stint at the, in the, at, at the factory, um, I also, that's when I registered for my PhD and um, I then started uh, doing uh, teaching at university. And that was very enjoyable okay. because it's something that I've been doing for years. Yeah, yeah. But in saying that, mm -hmm. it had its own challenges because you're coming into a new environment. environment and the communication styles are different. Yeah, yeah uh, true, true. The, the attitude of the students is are also totally different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the, 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 the authority of the teacher mm -hmm. is often challenged in very strange ways mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, in, in Australia, unlike maybe when I was in Zimbabwe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so but I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it was. It was a terrible thing. Yeah. It was something that I, I really enjoyed. Okay. Uh, or enjoyed marking, you know, grading yeah. uh, essays and also conversations with students. Mm -hmm. um, also, I learned a lot about the use of technology in teaching. Uh, so it, it was it was a new environment in the sense that um, I had to adjust myself. I had to quickly adjust myself in order to, 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 to survive in the environment. But on the other side, I was also learning. I was doing my writing. I was doing my, my studies. Mm. Would meet my supervisor more often. And that's, that okay. was, a very very exciting uh, moment okay yeah. allow me to take you back a little bit mm. i want to understand more when the moment in time where you're by you you being a laborer mm -hmm. okay because i think those are the defining moments in life yeah those are the challenging moments in life because you're coming from zim right yeah you've been a lecturer at university yeah right you're coming in here you're being a laborer yeah at a construction site yeah how did you feel about it oh it was it was fun because because um you know you are meeting people, some people for the first time, or mm. some people from, you know, I, I, I used to work with guys from Lebanon, some guys uh, from Iran, and I took that as a learning, as an opportunity to learn mm -hmm, mm -hmm. more than anything else. So I didn't want to be distracted by the feelings of inadequacy or the feelings of struggle. It wasn't really a struggle because I would get my money I would pay my rent. I would, I would, I would, I would enjoy the moments, but probably it changed my conversations. Mm. It changed my conversations in the sense that when you get a phone call from someone back home, mm -hmm. they would ask you, "What are you doing?" Uh, if you say, "I am a laborer," laborer, yeah, yeah. Probably people will say, "Is that is that why why you went to Australia to be a laborer? Oh, why did you? Oh, you are not tell, oh, you are not telling us the truth." Yeah, yeah. But the reality is that Australia is a very, very, very different environment. Yeah, it is different. You you are rewarded for what you do, mm -hmm. and every any job that you can pick, mm -hmm. probably it can give you a livelihood. Yeah, yeah, that is so. True. Yeah, I, I, I cherish I cherish, I cherish those times. Moments, and yeah. I knew that it was it was a stepping stone. Mm, mm. It's it, it's not something that I wanted to, to, to stay in for a long time. A long time yeah. But it was something that I had my goals. time, yeah. my goals, I'd set my goals and I wanted to achieve something within the the, the time and mm, this was mm. the most convenient thing for mm, me to do mm, mm, at mm. that point. Okay. So I really, do I, 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 I don't look back and say and, and with any, any kind of regret okay. at all. Being the cornerstone of, of the interview that I have, I'll, I'll yeah. go back once again on that yeah. moment in time. Yeah. Um, being a laborer, right? Yeah. It, it requires you to 
that's the physical part. It's the physical yeah. part of the job, right? Mm -hmm. Coming being a lecturer, you're using more of your mind compared to the physical part. That transition again, yeah. how did you manage to, to... I think it gave me a balance. It gave you a balance? Yeah, it gave me a balance in the sense that... And by the way, I, did, yeah. I, did, I, I, I didn't do the laboring job for, for too long. I think okay. it was just for maybe uh, one month. Okay. No, not not a very long time, mm. but I think it's something that I had to I had to do because it gave me a new perspective about life. Mm. Um, it gave me an opportunity to look at life in a very fresh way, mm -hmm. but also allowing me to make connections with other people. And when I was working for the agency, I, I, I know that, um, I, I can tell you that I, I, I used to meet certain people that I formed connections with and that I met even years after. Oh, and oh. still would connect and would talk and would laugh okay. about the okay. jokes yeah, that yeah, we course. used to make. And then, <laughs> so, so yeah, that, 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 that's what I can say about that uh, part okay. of, 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 uh, of my journey. Wow, that's, mm. that, that, that's amazing because you took that very positively, yep. very positively, which I think really helped you to springboard yourself to, to the next level. Mm. And um, from there, that one month you're being in a laborer, were you looking at options? Was, were there a challenge in terms of getting that, the place that, to uni? Or was it that easy? was in October mm -hmm. and uh, the position, I, I'd already secured a position uh, at the university, but my supervisor was, he had been on sabbatical. Okay. So I was waiting for my, my supervisor to come back. And my supervisor would only return uh, the following year. Oh, okay. In, um, in, 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 in January? February? January, February. Yeah, when uni is so, open. So I, I had all this time to, to do whatever I could do okay. before my supervisor returned. Okay. So that gave me the opportunity to know Sydney better, to mm. know Australia mm. better, to meet uh, some Australians and have conversations with them so that I would really, when my supervisor returned, I was going to maybe just mm -hmm. give my attention to, yeah. to, 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 to the new challenge. Okay. Yeah. You spoke about the adventure, you know, the, the work that you did initially being an adventure. Yeah. I, I think I still see that in you right now, right? Because for the last uh, five years or yeah. so, how many cities have you lived in? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Let's talk about that. how many cities you lived in. <laughs> yeah, so so for the okay. Yeah. So yeah, I I, I you know I lived in Sydney. Yeah. Um, from 2007 to 2016. Yeah, yeah. Then mid 2016, I left Sydney and went to North Queensland. Wow. Mackay. Wow. And I lived in Mackay for about a year. Yeah, yeah. And then moved from Mackay to, to Rockhampton. Yes, yes. Yeah, lovely, lovely, lovely places. Place, yeah. yeah. And then I'm now back in Sydney. So, uh, but still my family is, yeah. Okay, okay. That's... Still in Mackay, yeah, it's, it's still in Rocky. Okay, oh, yeah. that's, that's good. But did you enjoy those places that you went? Very much, and I made friends wow. and some friends for life so so which is which is good it's a great thing yeah, yeah definitely yeah all right so now you were at uni in uh, in sydney right mm -hmm. was that uh, sydney university no university of new south wales university of new south wales okay beautiful that's fine so um, you you're saying those challenges in terms of communication you know the convention styles were different with with students with yes. students yeah. uh, how did you manage to uh, to get that around I think I think students when when you got something to offer students mm. have uh, a good uh, some goodwill, um, uh. and also I think people in Australia they sometimes appreciate that um, it's not really about how you communicate, but mm. it's about what you communicate. Mm. Mm. Um, the majority of of people appreciate that, mm. 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 and mm. also there is some positive things that come with um, some positive things that come with diversity yeah so because I had different experiences in um, from a different country from a different cultural background I think when you are looking at things mm. when you are looking at issues mm. probably you provide different perspectives mm. and being in the humanities, for example, because, for example, I was teaching uh, ethics, 
yeah. for nurses oh. at Notre Dame. Uh, when they're teaching ethics for nurses, there are topics that you may provide a different perspective from your background. Yeah. That when you are having a conversation, it will be really a, a fruitful conversation in the sense that one person gives their perspective, another give their perspective, mm -hmm. and it will be a battle of ideas. Mm. From that point of view, then it brings some richness to conversations. Uh, so that's 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 what I can say about people's attitudes. It's it's not overly uh, negative. It was quite positive, but you could see that in some cases people may struggle to get what you are saying because of your accent. Okay, fair enough. Uh, just as sometimes you struggle with understanding the accent as well. Uh, so it, it goes both ways. Yeah, yeah. But I think what it takes is the ability for people to sit down and listen to each other. Mm. If that occurs, then there is uh, that um, transcultural understanding okay. where you say, yeah, I get what you're saying. And the other person says, oh, oh get yeah. also what you're saying. So, yeah, so um, that's... Okay, yeah. okay. And people start to, to learn, you know, different cultures because of that, Yeah. you know? Mm. Okay, okay. You know what, let's, um, let's have a look at, uh, because you have done a lot of um, journals, uh, the peer review journals. You have, you have written a lot of uh, chapters in different books. Mm. You have uh, written in magazines, mm. uh, well repeatable as well, um, because of your expertise in there. Was, um, did you write these journals whilst you were doing your PhD? Yes. Okay, okay, yes. all right. So I, I did my, I started my, doing my PhD in 2008. Okay. And 2009, that's when I started, um, I had my first publications in, in Australia. But of course, when the, 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 the articles that I published in 2009, mm -hmm. I'd already started them 2008. Oh, okay. So, and I started, um, my publications were done simultaneously with my PhD studies. Is that normal? It's... <laughs> <laughs> well, I just want to know. Question about normal. <laughs> I think it's normal. Okay. But when you are studying for a PhD, what I've seen is that uh, most people don't, um, they would rather do the writing, especially yeah. articles that are different from... Uh, their PhD topic. Yeah, yeah. That's what I did. I, I used oh. to write things that are not even sometimes not related to my PhD topic. Oh, wow. Yeah, my, my PhD topic was uh, on John Rawls, yeah. uh, political liberalism, and how it could be applied to the African post-colonial context. Okay. Uh, so I wrote about Zimbabwean politics. I wrote about mm. African politics. I wrote about a lot of other, especially um, uh, the transitions that were happening in Zimbabwe mm. at the moment. Mm, mm, That's mm. when we had political violence in Zimbabwe. That's when yeah. we had um, the government of national unity, or the GNU, yeah, yeah. and all those changes on the political landscape of Zimbabwe. Mm, mm. And the African responses to that, mm, mm. that was my interest. Mm. Uh, so, Coming back to your question about is it normal, probably I would say, rather than saying normal, probably unusual. Unusual, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> in the sense that when you are studying for a PhD, probably the expectation is just do your PhD, concentrate on the topic, mm -hmm. and master that and master it well, mm -hmm. then finish, then look at the publications afterwards. But because I had this uh, burning desire to publish, and it started when I was back in Zimbabwe, where I didn't have much opportunity to do that. I felt this was my time. Mm. So when I finished my PhD, for example, I would say I had my PhD, yes, but I also had uh, over 15 
publications. 15 publications? Yeah, yeah. So how many are publishing like literally per year? Oh, uh, I, 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 yeah, I, I, I would, I would publish maybe um, three publications yeah. every year, yeah. And it was quite, I, I, I used to enjoy it. Uh, despite the time, um, I, the time consuming nature of reading, writing, yeah. sending to an editor, having uh, the articles peer reviewed, mm -hmm. and you could get some some of the some of the comments or some of the feedback would be <laughs> quite uh, quite brutal, nasty, you know, quite brutal, <laughs> but. I would stand my ground mm, mm. and have a conversation with the editor and say, I think with all due respect to uh, what the editor or what the, uh, the, 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 the peer reviewer has said, mm, but mm. I, I, st I will stick to my argument mm, mm. and I accept some of the corrections, but this argument is valid in these ways. Mm. And my articles will be accepted. So, <laughs> Uh, it was it was quite quite uh, quite exciting, despite uh, the pressure that mm. that I had. But at the same time, I also felt the pressure mm. that I needed to okay. write something. I needed to put my ideas out mm, there, mm, mm, and mm, mm, mm. that allowed me to be in the company of people that I really enjoyed interacting with, especially fellow academics. Mm. Uh, fellow African studies uh, experts and I also attended some conferences okay. and I was so lucky because the University of New South Wales mm. also paid for some of the conferences oh. that I attended. Okay. One of the conferences I attended was uh, in um, University of Aberystwyth in, uh, Where is that? Uh, in Wales. In, oh, in the UK, okay. yeah. Okay. Okay. So I, I attended that, and the University of New South Wales paid uh, wow, that's my a travel cost. Yeah, and it resulted in um, in a publication oh. in one of the books uh, 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 as a proceedings from from the conference. So it's it was it was something that I really. Mm wanted to do. You enjoy doing it? I really enjoyed doing it. Okay. Despite the pressure that it of came with. So there you are at uni doing a PhD. Yep. Still at the same time you're doing your publications. Yep. Right? Which is very unusual. Mm -hmm. Okay. But uh, you've got a family as well at the same time. Yes. Yes. So I had a, I had a family. <laughs> and I, I, I recall uh, my daughter was born um, our daughter was born during that period okay. of time uh, when we were doing the writing and that. But I would make sure that I would give her time and we'll go cycling, we'll go to the park. Wow. And um, I also had uh, a number of jobs. In uh, that same period of time? Yes, yes. Because you see, I was. I, I, I had a scholarship, mm -hmm. um, Australian Postgraduate uh, Award, okay. uh, which, is, which was general, generally a generous uh, scholarship, okay. but it wasn't adequate for my needs mm -hmm. and my mm -hmm. personal circumstances. Okay. So I had to, you know, work okay. Okay. extra. So we're talking about PhD, yeah. publications, mm -hmm. family. Yeah. Little, little daughter is in there. Yeah, and also a friends. A few jobs. And also friends like you. And friends as well. <laughs> we, used to, we used to catch up, didn't we? I know, yeah, yes, yeah. we used to, man. Yeah. You, you were so busy. Yeah. You were so busy. Yeah. And obviously that also helped, you know, molding you as, as, as you... I think it gave me, it mm. gave me perspective. Mm. It mm. gave me some focus. Mm. And um, my, my intention or my plan, my mm. grand plan in the, in the whole scheme of things was after I completed my PhD, I was going back to Africa. Okay. Yes. Okay. Of which I did some applications, mm -hmm. uh, job applications to universities in South Africa. Uh, I got a job in one of the universities, mm -hmm. a postdoctoral fellowship. Okay, okay. Yeah. And that's when something struck me to yeah. say, okay, my first child was finishing uh, 
A level mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and about to go to uni. Yeah, yeah. And I said, if I go to South Africa, then do I take my kids? Do I take my wife and kids back? What, what's going to happen? Mm. So I decided, no. You're not doing it? No, I'm not doing it. That's when I changed my, my career path. Wow. So you got this job in um, a university in South Africa. Yes. And uh, the package that came with that job was quite lucrative. It was by South African standards. Yes, but you you you, li you liked it. Yeah, I could have gone there, but that would have meant mm. I was going to be an expatriate in South Africa. Okay. I don't know whether it was going to be adequate. Okay. With kids going to school and, and um, everything else. Yeah. But you had to make a, a conscious decision because of family. Yes. So that's why I decided I would stick around. Mm, mm. And I worked out, okay, if I were to get this job and if I continue in my current, what I consider to be my part-time job, yeah, yeah. if I made it a full-time job, mm. what's, what's going to be the, the difference? Then, of course, my, that part-time job that I was going to make a full-time job would have paid me less, but you, the bonus of staying with the family, it was going to top it off. What was the part-time job, if I may ask? I was in disability then. Oh. Yeah, so I was uh, a disability support worker. Okay, okay. Yeah. You are a diverse man, yeah. tell me, man. So... So you're coming from uni, now, okay, that's fine. I'm looking at my options. There's South Africa in there, I'm not doing that. I'm looking at a couple of options. Let me be a disability support worker. Yes, because mm. it, it, it offered this uh, flexibility. Mm. Uh, imagine, because... Imagine uh, you are coming from uh, your, your university yeah, studies. Yeah. Then you can go to your disability work. Mm -hmm. When you finish, you go to your family. Oh, okay. So it allowed me to do three things on Some one time. day. Yeah, yeah. So I would divide my, my day into eight hours. <laughs> so eight hours to 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 do my disability work, eight hours to study, yeah. and the other eight hours I'll split it between sleeping and doing. Um, Doctor, T, it, were you really intentional about that? No, I think I think I'm I'm just looking at it now. This yeah, is yeah, what yeah. I reflection, yes. But when I was doing it, I mm. never thought probably I had too much energy yeah, as yeah. well. Okay. Uh, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't encourage anyone to do it. <laughs> Honestly, I don't wouldn't. do this at all. <laughs> no, no, don't do it. because I, I just survived by sheer luck. Probably mm -hmm. things would, things would have been otherwise if I, Fair if I had continued uh, in, on, on, on that path. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But obviously, you had some goals that you wanted to achieve. Then you exactly. achieved them. Then mm -hmm. you, you, you took um, maybe a slow, a slow pace after yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, you took this uh, job as a disability support worker. Did you? It was part time, right? Yeah, it was. Is that the time that we took it to have it as full time, or? Oh, it was part time. It was part time. It was part time. Continue to be part time. Yep. Okay. Okay. Then, then um, I, I, I then applied to. That's when the NDIS rolled out. Yeah. Yeah. Then I, I, I jumped ship, and that's when I moved to 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 Queensland. So you started working for the National Disability Agency? Yes. Wow. As a planner. As a planner. Yeah. Oh my God. From a lecturer, PhD student, yeah. disability support worker, to NDIS planner. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That, that's quite encouraging. <laughs> that's, uh, so, so, but it was good because yeah. that's, um, I mean, the, the, working for the agency, mm -hmm. it was, an eye-opening mm. um, moment and rolling out the NDIS was a new experience altogether because we're part of the change mm. that brought um, the, scheme. That, the scheme to life and also it revolutionized the way disability supports were provided Mm -hmm. in in Australia so mm -hmm. okay that's yeah. that, that's quite interesting and uh, whilst you you continue being being a planner with with the agency um 
You wrote an article, a peer-reviewed article, which was relevant with that industry, did you? Yes, I did. Mm. So it was an article on um, mobility and disability studies. Wow. During the, the peak of COVID, yeah. um, I, with the closures, uh, schools were closed, hospitals uh, were operating at mm -hmm. a... Uh, uh, and also there was um, in Victoria, for example, whole hostels were just closed and yeah, sealed. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I started to think about if people are complaining about these closures, mm. how they are limiting their freedoms, mm, mm. how do people with a disability look at us who are complaining just because the hostel block has been closed for, this period of uh, for a period of time? for a particular reason that is known, mm -hmm. how do people with a disability look at us? Um, that was one, one question. The second question was also to say, okay, if mobility, being able to mobilize, being able to traverse through space, mm -hmm. is that important? Now, are we seeing this in a different light because of COVID? Mm -hmm. How has COVID transformed our perceptions about mobility? At the same time, do the failure or inability of people with a disability to mobilize, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what does it say about the, the about uh, disability studies? Yeah, yeah disability studies as, as it failed to interact with mobility studies just to have a conversation mm. about mobility on one hand disability on the other hand mm -hmm. how can mobility enrich disability studies and how can disability studies as well enrich uh, um, disability studies yeah. Yeah. so uh, I, I realized that there was um, a disjuncture between two. the two, and I wanted to highlight that mm -hmm. in the article. What's the name of that article? It's called Mobilizing Disability Studies. Dr. K, this could be very interesting. I would love to have another conversation yeah. around that article, if you don't mind. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay? yeah. We can, we can have, we can have a conversation about it at, at, a, at a later time. I love that. All right. Yeah. Probably for now, we'll just have a, a small break, um, and we'll come back to you very soon. Thank you.